March 29th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, John chapter 20 from the New Testament. Now very early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been moved away from the entrance. So she went running to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out to go to the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down and saw the strips of linen cloth lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who had been following him, arrived and went right into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen cloth lying there, and the face cloth, which had been around Jesus' head, not lying with the strips of linen cloth, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, came in and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that Jesus must rise from the dead. So the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb weeping. As she wept, she bent down and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where Jesus' body had been lying, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Mary replied, They have taken my Lord away, and I do not know where they have put him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Because she thought he was the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus replied, Do not touch me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. Go to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and informed the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what Jesus had said to her. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the disciples had gathered together and locked the doors of the place because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. Just as the Father has sent me, I also send you. And after he said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you retain anyone's sins, they are retained. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he replied, Unless I see the wounds from the nails in his hands and put my finger into the wounds from the nails and put my hand into his side, I will never believe it. Eight days later, the disciples were again together in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and examine my hands. Extend your hand and put it into my side. Do not continue in your unbelief, but believe. Thomas replied to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are the people who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus performed many other miraculous signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. God, today we're, we're actually in the middle of celebrating Holy Week. And I know in future years as people listen to this video, it may be before this or it may be after this. But it's so fitting to be reading these stories right now. And, and today I just want to pray for for all the doubting Thomases out there. There's so many people who say that the stone was moved. Really? (laughs) 
It was moved by the disciples or somebody else intent on stealing away Jesus' body. Almost two tons of stone. With a Roman guard unit, usually about four Roman guards guarding it, who had been trained to fight, and if they weren't successful, would be tortured and, and humiliated, possibly even given over to death. So there weren't grave robbers. There weren't disciples who came and stole his body in the middle of the night. There were linen cloths that had been wrapped around Jesus' body and Jesus' head at the time that he was buried, and those were found inside the tomb. Nobody in an attempt to hurry and make away with the body would have very carefully unwrapped all of those and folded them in the tomb. I think these are all the little niches in the wall that people try and hold on to to try and stop themselves from having an opportunity to have a relationship with you. All these little excuses that people come up that can so easily be explained away for reasons to not give up everything and follow you. You know, some of them are the reasons of the world. Money, comfort, family, possessions, wealth, jobs. But today, God, I pray for them. I pray for anybody who doesn't have a relationship with you for whatever reason, whether it's for little tiny pieces that they think they can hold on to as not being factual in the Bible. Or the things of the world that they want to hold on to. You say to count the cost before following you, before following your son. And some people say that we need to count the cost of what your son went through. And I totally agree with that and have said so repeatedly through these videos. But we also need to look at our own lives and realize what that's going to take. Are we truly willing to give up everything and follow you? Are we truly willing to lie everything that is us of the world and put it at your feet and allow you to take over? I know what you offer is so much more, but in the temptations of the world, at least while we're here alive on in this world, it can seem very heavy handed that the world can offer us more. The world can offer us a handsome boyfriend. The world can offer us ego. The world can offer us so many gods. And so many reasons to not believe in you. God, I pray t today that for all those doubting Thomases out there that something would happen in their life someone would happen in their life some event would, would change something in their life and that their hardened heart would be softened by you would be softened by your grace and mercy that if you chose them like you talk about in John 15 16 if you chose them and have offered that gift to them that they would be willing to give up everything and follow you. And not follow what the world says Christianity is, or follow what the world says a relationship with God is, but follow what the Bible says you are. Follow what the Bible says that Jesus was, is, and is to come. says more than once in the Bible to not add anything or take anything away from the Bible 
And it feels like we do that every single day to fit in to what we want religion to be and fit into what we want you to be God. What our relationship with you needs to be so that we can be comfortable. For the Doubting Thomases today, who haven't made that commitment yet to give up everything, to get everything from you, I just pray for their hearts. I pray that they ask questions. I pray that they question things in the Bible and that they look them up in the Bible. Because I know once you're in your word, God, as long as you allow us, everything starts to make sense. My heart is breaking this week for all the people that won't get to spend eternity with you because they keep choosing the world over you. Satan has it so easy in the United States, it's so easy to distract people away from their true purpose with you. You are a God of grace and mercy and forgiveness. You are a God that is in control of every single thing in this world because you made it. You are my God who reigns sovereign over the entire universe and in my heart. I just pray that all of those hearts out there that need you which is everyone would find you and accept the incredible gift of the sacrifice of your son for the forgiveness of their sins that rescued them from eternal death and instead is giving them eternal life with you. Please God, allow your will to be done in these people's lives. I'm so scared at what is happening in this world. I know how it all ends. I'm just scared of all the stuff in between. Please, God, let your will be done. In your son's name we pray. Amen.